going to start with let's see if they have number 222 and 223 oh wow didn't realize they're that close together okay so 222 is antelope brown so let's give it a little shake that's this sort of muddier kind of greeny brown oh it's beautiful i mean that is absolutely stunning love this color it's just so pretty um, this color mixes well with other colors as well so it's not just beautiful on its own but um, it's quite interesting in other mixes maybe should just do it a little bit bigger here I'm thinking just a bit we have loads of space there we go, just to show the intensity of it. It's like a coffee, like a coffee stain, I'd say. Maybe, like a coffee with turmeric in there. And this one is burnt amber now. I love warm browns. Okay, so this is more of a reddish and it's not what I would expect from an umber red. So I'm so glad I'm exploring these colors here, although naturally I wouldn't kind of gravitate towards them by by name. So like, you know, burnt umber, for instance, in watercolors would be a very kind of like a grayish, cool toned brown. This is very different and looks stunning. Um, so I think once these dry, I'll try the pencils on them or the, the white pencil, just on the corner somewhere. And then let's do these colors. So I'll try to put them in order by then color number. Now, uh, Windsor Newton designers gouache. So I have put them in the color range by the number of the color and this is the arrangement that we got here. So what I'm going to do is just simply uh, try to squeeze out some. This is quite similar to one of those whole buying colors that I have but it's very pretty. Just going to squeeze out all of them. So this is just gouache. It doesn't have acrylic in there because the paints that I have really, really enjoyed were the Holbein acrylic gouache, which basically dry to this crazy matteness, like super matte. It almost feels like velvet. Um, so these. I don't think we'll do that, but I want to see what the drying finish looks on them. And also, from the feel that I got watching other creators here on YouTube, um, things like pencils, colored pencils, layer differently on these because they don't have acrylic so with the acrylic gouache sometimes because of the components the um, surface can be slightly um, like plasticky from that acrylic uh, content in there but anyways let's just use some water and we're going to create large swatches Mm, this feels like butter. This is a beautiful yellow. Naples Yellow Deep. It's that kind of muted, yet it has enough color 
and punch. So I really like that. Beautiful colors. Here is the Opera Pink. Now it comes through a little bit transparent compared to the others. So I wonder if I just didn't put enough paint on there. I think the price is very good for the quality of these paints and from Windsor and Newton you'd expect the price to be quite elevated but the gouache feels amazing. Okay, so the next one, so let's see, so this was uh, Pale Rose Blush this is Naples Yellow Deep Opera Rose and this is the Orange Lake Deep. This is like amazing color. It's a fire engine, super, super bright. I love this color. It's like in between, right in between a orange and a red. So if you would isolate it from all colors, it'd be hard to say what it is exactly. Uh, next to a pink, it looks slightly more orange, but it's just stunning. And this color, and this one is Paraline Maroon. So also the other thing, because it doesn't have acryl acrylic in there, like the acrylic wash, uh, it means that it's not permanent. So the acryla in the gouache makes it permanent, which means once it dries, you can't go over it. It will be, um, you know, non um workable so you won't be able to reactivate it whereas with this paint just like with watercolor it is water soluble so even after it dries you still can reactivate it so you don't need to rush with it before it dries and it's also gentler on your brushes as well rose terrine so you can see here if this was acrylic gouache i would have trouble getting it off. Oh, this is stunning color. I'm glad I got it. It's like a more cooler version of the Opera Pink. On the camera it's almost hard to tell the difference because this one is like neon pink really and so it sort of does some crazy stuff on the camera. But here... Um, it's interesting what my color palette is here. Um, what I had in mind when I was picking these colors actually was a specific uh, theme and these are supposed to be for my kind of, you know, faces and girls illustrations and that sort of a thing. Um, these are a bit more muted, uh, but yeah, the colors are <laughs> beautiful. I think for September they're stunning. I wonder what my September favorites will be like which I'll be filming in about, so let's see how that goes. Okay, I will let this dry, I will title it, and then what I wanted to do is come over with the Holbein pencil and just kind of scribble a few marks and see what it looks like on the gouache paint as well as on the darker backgrounds. As things were drying, I actually got quite curious to compare um, my previously purchased kind of pale and pastel pinks and peaches that sort of a color scheme here with the pale rose blush because I thought it's quite similar to some of the colors I have but not quite. So here I have swatched out um, a color that actually looked very close to it as it was still wet it was the Magellan Mission Gold in June Brilliant number no. two and it's uh, It dries a lot darker, a lot more peachy, so once it dried you can see it's nothing like it. At the end I swatched out the um, gouache, the pale rose blush, right here as well, just to have it on the same paper, because sometimes color can change a little bit. And you can see that it's just an absolute stunning paint. Like, I think I would buy this over and over and over if it finished because it's just so unique. It's the color that I was after when I was buying these and they weren't quite the right thing. So uh, these are Holbein 
uh, WHC, which is this paint um, in shell pink. You can see it's way too pink here. And then very similar to it is Mission Gold, also shell pink. And then we have the June Brilliant number no. 2, which is a lot peachier than this color. And then this is just gorgeous. If you are curious what sketchbook this is, actually I bought it at Hobbycraft quite a few months ago and I was buying it for my son so that he can just do a bit of sketching and then I got a bit greedy and I decided to keep it because the paper is actually really good. Um, it's the... I'm just trying to show you without ruining the swatches. So it's this one here, Sea Wide of Brighton Sketchbook. It's a square format and it's got 140 GSM paper, which is great for all media acid free cartridge paper. So it's it's good for different mediums. And I have to say, uh, it was also quite sort of uh, budget friendly and it's got so many pages in there. So I'm gonna definitely keep it. Um, just for like maybe abstract um, bit of swatching or something. Yeah, so that's that. And now let's have a look at the pencil and how that goes. So in terms of the um, paints, what I found with the Winsor Newton designer gouache that out of these six colors, Three of them felt a little bit more um, closer to a watercolor, so they had more of a transparency to them, which I didn't know a gouache paint could have. So, Pale Rose Blush, Naples Yellow Deep and Orange Lake Deep, they all felt very opaque, but you could if you wanted to dilute them to more watery mixes. However, with the Opera Rose and Rose Tyrian and a little bit of Perilene Maroon, I felt that I had to add a bit of color for it to get to that full opacity that I got with the other three. Um, so that's the only thing I have noticed. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this paint as I would use the gouache um, acrylic paint uh, when I want a full impact I just use a brush um, just wet it slightly but mostly take most moisture out of it and use the paint out of the tube straight onto paper and see how opaque it dries so I'm gonna do that as well uh, but before that I just want to um, try this Holbein artist colored pencil in soft white because I just can't wait anymore. I have been so curious about this pencil. Oh, I see. It's got like a very beautiful. It almost sticks to the paper. I wonder if it's smudgeable. I mean, not really. It stays quite well. Yes, it's super wide and That is beautiful. You can see how super white it is. Now, if I had another white, let's see. I have a buff titanium here, just to compare. It's obviously more yellow, but you can see it's not as white. I'm trying to see what else white I have. I have a Faber Castell Albrecht Dura, which is a watercolor pencil. Let's compare it here. Also, not as wide. And what else do I have that's white? I might have a, let's see, in my other pencils. So I've got a Durvant Light Fast in white. I'm not sure why I decided to compare my white pencils here on a whim, but why not? Okay, so here is the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Let's see how wide that is. Okay, not at all. Probably the weakest out of them. And let's try Albrecht Dura. Okay, that's, that's a good one. 
but not the same. Um, I'd say slightly better than the previous pencils I have swatched. I had a bit of blue in there, but nothing like this. Okay, so that is good that I have this pencil now. I'm going to also try drawing lines on this gouache. The only trouble with it is, of course, if you wanted a really thin line. That is beautiful. You would, um, you know, have to sharpen it ever so often. It glides beautifully over the gouache paints. And I'm going to also try a bit of my Dark Indigo by Luminance, just to see how it feels on this gouache. It feels lovely. It feels like it grips a bit better than on the acrylic gouache. That's just from memory, but I feel like it definitely grips better. Okay, well that was a very successful purchase with all of these colors are super super beautiful and I am really excited in trying this pencil. What's interesting is that when you have a few crumbs and you even use your finger, it does not smudge, which is what you would expect from a soft pencil. Um, like if you would do the same with the Caran d'Ache, the pigment smudges. Um, so I always use, you know, a brush, but with these, I just tried doing it a few times and it just, well, oh, actually smudged here a little bit, but, that's basically the colorway that we have today. Super, super bright and exciting. So finally, let's just try out this here. So I wanna see how opaque I can get this paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also actually going to try the new brush. So this is the Filbert size two. I'm taking most of the paint out and I'm going to try just the colors um, that I felt could have been more opaque. So straight from the tube, like that. So that should be at its most opaque because obviously there is like hardly any water, this is just the paint from the tube. I want to see to what finish they dry. Next one is Paraline Maroon. I'm going to thoroughly wash my brush. The paint seems to wash off better than the acrylic gouache from the brush. So that's a good thing. The brush feels nice as well. It's the right size that I wanted to have. And then Rose Terrienne. Let's have a look at that one. Also, we'll be able to see the matteness level that it dries to.
Okay, I will wait for this paint to dry and then show you a close-up. Um, from this little experiment, I felt like, yes, I could get the Opera Rose um, quite opaque and Perlin Maroon almost looks like a different color because it's so intense here. It almost looks like a dark, dark, like a reddish brown. Um, so uh, I quite like it both ways really, but with the Opera Rose, I wish it was a bit more opaque to begin with because you can see as soon as you start adding more water, it kind of has these sparse areas which didn't happen with these three colors. Now with the Rose Tyrian, I felt that the composition of the paint felt slightly different to the rest. It felt a little bit uh, drier from the tube, so I actually um, struggled to get it off uh, with a little with my with my little brush here and also to build it up it was a bit of a task it felt quite um, I, I don't want to say streaky but it felt difficult to build it up but it is such a beautiful color and I actually prefer it like this so with a bit of water it didn't have the you know what it what it did here with the opera pink it's more uh, more stable in that way. So these are beautiful You know, I just would adjust how I use them and I definitely love the opera rose in its most opaque state It's such a gorgeous color Actually also close to the brown. It, it looks really beautiful So let me give you a close-up now of all of them so you can enjoy the beauty. So here we have antelope brown burnt Amber and Rose Tyrian and Pale Rose Blush Naples Yellow Deep Opera Rose Orange Lake Deep that's such a classic red I can I can really sort of see this color in so many illustration styles that we have seen uh, in production, in advertising, and you know, in magazines, this is like I never realized that uh, Windsor Newton had this um, staple color. I mean, it's it's just like nothing else is out there like this. Paraline maroon to end, and of course the beautiful. Oh, I didn't write the pencil, but I'll write it later down anyway. The soft white by Holbein. Across all of them, you can see how intensely white it is. I think I will settle with this white. I don't need to look for a white anymore. This is it. Oh, I actually had another white. Do you know what? Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a comparison because I have another white which can draw on like, you know, metal, glass and everything. So maybe I'll do that mm, and just um, dedicate a whole video to it because I know that I've done so many researches trying to find the perfect white pencil. I feel like I already did it now with the uh, with the um, soft white. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.